you know, most folks choose to invest out of state because it's just too expensive where they live at. You know, mm. I, I live in LA. I could try to come up with hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy an investment property out here and it'll take me forever. Or I can uh -huh. go to the Midwest or some parts of the South and get something for a hundred thousand or even less, right? Really? And make wow. and make a good return. Oh yeah, and make a good return. Um, mm -hmm. And so you know, I think that that's the biggest difference. On honestly, the price, the price, mm -hmm. and the price. What's up? What's up, my FY Fly folks out there? How y'all doing? I hope y'all doing all right. Welcome to the FY Fly podcast. My name is Hassan Thomas, aka the kid that did and the man that can, baby. And today, we're going to be chopping it up with educator, real estate investor, real estate podcaster, and overall, man, just a good dude, my man, Sam Docine. How are you, brother? How are you? Oh, man, I'm doing great, man. You got my name right on the first try, so shout out to you. And uh, I, I love your intro, man. I like that a lot. I'm doing great, man. I, I appreciate the opportunity, and I, I've been looking forward to this conversation, man. Most definitely, bro. Most definitely, bro. You know, I had to turn you up, pipe you up, but I didn't even need to, man, because you're killing it in a real estate game. So we're definitely, definitely going to get into that. You know, we met at FinCon, but we no longer at FinCon, man. We here on FY Fly, and what we like to do, we like to skip the fluff and get right into the good stuff. How that sound? Sounds perfect, man. All right, bet, bet. So the first thing, man, I want to know is, what was the turning point for you when you knew real estate could be that changing point, that turning point for you, your family, bringing in that generational wealth, what was that turning point for you? I love that. So the turning point for me was in 2018. So I was at work. For some reason, I was compelled to look at my retirement account. So I looked at it and mm -hmm. they had these calculators. There are two calculators. The first calculator said, you know, based on getting 3% or whatever raises till you're 67 and a half, this is how much we think you'll have at that time. And the next yeah. calculator said, all right, how much of this money do you want to live off of in your retirement? And so I put the number in and I quickly realized the money wasn't going to last long. And so right. I'm like, okay, I need to figure out something to make more money. And I'm, I'm located in LA currently and I couldn't afford anything. I couldn't get approved for anything out here. And I ended up discovering that people were investing out of state. I didn't know you could do that. And yeah. so I spent 12 months just diving in, trying to piece information together because I didn't know anybody who was doing it. And you know, I was eventually able to reach that goal. But to answer your question, the turning point was realizing that my retirement was not going to be enough to take care of me and my future family. Mm -hmm. Got you, got you, got you. So where were you working at the time? So at the time, if I was you don't mind at, me asking, oh yeah. <laughs> at the time, I was working at a school. So like nine to five, wise. My background is in HR. Did that for almost ten years. But at the time, I was working at a school. So the kids were running mm -hmm. up and down the hallway. I was in the office, and I'm like, "This is this is not going to be pretty." <laughs> so did you have previous real estate background, like, or did you just jump in fresh, you know, fresh right into the game and had to start learning? Like, what what was that like? Jumped in fresh, didn't know a thing. So wow. I didn't have any previous background, didn't know any other investors doing it at a high level. So I, I jumped, I jumped straight in. You know, I, I took 12 months to figure it out because I didn't have any coaching or anything like that. But yeah, I, I I didn't know I started from zero. I didn't know anything when I first started. So it took 12 months for you. What was your first real estate play like? How did that work? Describe it, like take us back to that. Yeah, so I, I currently invest in Dayton, Ohio. I have a couple single family homes out there. And my first property I purchased was a single family home. And I'll get to like how I even discovered investing there. So I, I had a bunch of markets on a list of different mm -hmm. places I wanted to consider investing in. I was reading all the blogs and what have you. And I got introduced to some folks out in Dayton, Ohio. I went out okay. for a market visit in like July of 2019. They drove me around. I got to see different properties. I got to check out the market and I did a lot of research beforehand. Mm -hmm. A couple months after that, I was able to buy that first property. So I did it conventionally, put 20% down. And the way I financed that is I took a loan against yeah. my retirement. And then I also put my student loans into forbearance the mm -hmm. year prior. And what that meant is that I didn't have to pay my student loans for a year and I was paying a lot of money. So the combination of those yeah. two things helped to speed up my process to buy that first property because just with what I was making at work, 
it would have took me mm-hmm. years to save enough for a down payment. So bought that property in uh, 2019. So, bro, you were literally living in L.A. and mm-hmm. you bought a property in Dayton, Ohio. Mm-hmm. How in the world did you do that? Like, what is the secret sauce to that? Were you nervous? Like, you're literally making a huge investment into a place that you're not even in. Like, <laughs> give, yeah. a, give us the game behind that, bro. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things I mentioned is I took 12 months to figure this whole thing out. Right. So by the time mm-hmm. it came time to invest, I knew the process. So I knew that I needed to build build a team. I knew that I needed to research the market and understand what the numbers are, understand what I would make per month, understand what I would need to invest. And at the time, I had a property manager as well. So what I like to tell people is know enough to get to the finish line. Right. Know enough mm-hmm. to just start. And you know, I've made a ton of mistakes over the last four years, but yeah, I knew enough to make the investment. And, you know, what I told myself, maybe it's kind of morbid. I'm like, look, if if all fails, if the tenants are not in the property and it just collapses, hopefully I get some insurance money and I move on. So for me, yeah. I was like, you know, like there's no downside. If I fail uh-huh. at the time I was 28, like if I fail, I could try again. And, you know, to, to me, the future of my family was on the line and, I, and we can go a bit and we can go a little more deeper into why I felt that way. But I didn't see any downside. And, you know, I think mm-hmm. it's important for people to and that there is risk. You calculate it as much as you can. But at a certain point, you got to jump off the porch. You got to get into yeah. the game and swim. You got to get into the pool and swim. So that was mm-hmm. my mentality. That was my mentality at the time. Man, I love what you said. My dad has always told me, you got to prepare for the war, prepare for the worst, but hope for the best. And my mom is a huge, you know, prayer. She's, you know, in her Bible. So she kind of tweaked it for me, prepare for the worst and pray for the best. So the way that I look at it, you know, with your story that you mentioned, you understood the worst thing that could happen, the worst, the lowest thing that could happen. And then you also understood the the highest, the most profitable, the most return on investment, ROI. You understood that as well. So once you kind of understand the, the the highs and the lows, let's go out there and shoot our shot. You know what That's I mean? Right. Like yep. we could, we even if we land, like if we land on the low spot, we already understood what that was. And even if we don't land on the highest spot, we not at the lowest, so we really still good. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. So what would you say personally has been like the biggest benefit from you investing into real estate? Yeah, so the first benefit I would say is just changing the trajectory of my family. So I grew up in Brooklyn. We lost our home when I was a kid. It was a horrible moment, and I'll never forget the specific day leaving the block mm-hmm. and just leaving the home that I grew up in and renting and renting from then on till I left home. And yeah. so, you know, that was a terrible moment. So one of the benefits is just being able to change the trajectory of my family's future. And the second benefit is obviously like, you know, you have the cash flow, you have the tax benefits and things of that nature, yeah. appreciation, et cetera. So those are, those are of course other benefits, but I think the other benefit as well, the last benefit I would say is that I've been yeah. able to support other people in learning how to do it, you know, learning how to buy their own, property out of state if they live in an expensive area and you know something i'm very passionate about you know helping people to do and so Mm -hmm. i I can go i can go on for days but you know it's a whole bunch of benefits benefits about investing into that real estate right (laughs) absolutely i don't regret it one bit so like like you said you show people how to buy real estate out of state Mm -hmm. what would you say is the biggest difference the biggest comparison like between investing into your local market compared to investing out of state like you show people like what's the biggest difference so i would say the biggest difference for most folks is price you know most folks choose to invest out of state because it's just too expensive where they live at you know Mm. i I live in la i could try to come up with hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy an investment property out here and it'll take me forever or i can Uh go to the midwest or some parts of the south and get something for a hundred thousand or even less right really and make wow. and make a good return oh yeah and make a good return mm-hmm. and so you know i think that that's the biggest difference on honestly the price the price mm-hmm. and 
the price. <laughs> That's the number one thing. Obviously, you know, there's a lot of other factors to consider, which I'm happy to go mm -hmm. into, but the number one driver is the price. So, you know, for the 20 year olds, for the 30 year olds listening here who haven't bought their first property yet, including myself, how should a person go about doing that? What would that look like? Kind of break that down for us. Yeah. So if I was, you know, early on, like my younger 20s, I would this 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 is where I would start. I would start with where you live. So I would say look into the FHA program, which allows you to put down as little as 3.5% down. Look into the NACA program, which allows you to put down 0% and no closing costs. There are like a number of other requirements, but those are for the first two things. So mm -hmm. I would say look into those two. And if, if where you live is fairly affordable, I would start there and see if you can purchase a property there. And if you can purchase a property, I would recommend considering a multi-unit property. So mm -hmm. it could be two units, three units, four units. I would consider doing that for a couple of reasons. One, depending on the numbers, the rents could subsidize your mortgage such that you could be living for less than you would if, if, if they weren't rented out or yeah. you could be living for free. Obviously it's a numbers thing, but that could be very beneficial. Mm -hmm. And you know, typically when you're younger, you may not necessarily have a family and stuff. So you can live in, in you can live in one of those units, right? And and rent for the sure. others out. So that'll be my encouragement. And if you are living in like a LA or New York City or somewhere where it's just crazy expensive, consider investing out of state. And you know, if you do, make sure that you understand the market, make sure that you understand how to build your team, make sure that you know how to analyze deals and understand mm -hmm. if you can really make money and make sure you network in that region. You can go to Facebook groups, you can go to a variety of things to network in that particular city. And I would say too, if you want to invest locally, join the local real estate meetups. There's plenty in, in most places and yeah. just network and learn. And you know, perhaps you can get a, get a mentor there or meet somebody else who's around your age and or, or has around the same level of experience as you, who you can grow together with. Gems on gems on gems, my brother. <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are dropping gems upon gems, man. So I have a couple more questions for yeah. you. Uh, what, I, what I would wanna know is on average, I know all the numbers, like you said, the numbers are really do dictate you know, how much, you know, you're, the numbers really do dictate um, how much you probably need to save. But on average, how much do you think a person should have saved up before purchasing their home? Yeah, let's say it is 200,000 and you know you wanna go do the FHA loan, which is 3.5% plus closing costs. There's various calculators that you can find online to mm -hmm. help you calculate what the closing cost might be, things like that. But start from there. What is 3.5% of 200,000? And then you wanna add in some room for closing costs and other expenses. And then you also so wanna have- So that closing cost, what you think will be like on, on average, like 5,000? It could be maybe like 5%. Okay. Give or take of gotcha. the purchase price give or take, sometimes less, sometimes more. And then I would also say when you're running these numbers, you want to also save several months of the mortgage payment and other expenses, right? So you want to have maybe at least three months of reserves just, just in case. You don't want to buy a property and you have no more, and you have no money left. That's the recipe for disaster. I do not recommend that. So, you know, I would say just back into it. So look at that 3.5% down. If you're putting 3.5% down, or if you're looking at a state, what is in, and you think you would want to go the conventional route and put 20% down, you calculate that and then the closing cost and also want to make sure you have a couple months of, of reserves as well. So at a high level, that's what I would say uh, to do. Mm -hmm. And if anyone wants like a calculator or something, you could just hit me up and I'll, I'll shoot it to you. Um, that can help you kind of run, run some of those numbers. No, nah, brother, that, that was great game. That was great game for everybody. One big thing that I'm huge on is giving practical game, practical advice for people. And that's literally what you did. Okay, boom. I know whatever, if the price is 200,000, we need to save at least 3.5% if we're getting that FHA loan. We also need to save 
at least at least five percent afford that. What did you say? Eight. Um, five percent, give or take, for closing cost. Okay. Yep. So five percent for the closing cost. So that's already you know eight point five percent. Also need to make sure that we have some money as reserves. So whenever we do move in and say, for example, we're expecting a tenant, but that tenant doesn't come in for three or four months, yep. you're not down bad. You're not struggling you know, to pay that rent or, or not even paying it or pay the mortgage. So I think that is all great practical advice, brother. So 2024, man, this is going to be a big, exciting year. What are you expecting for the real estate market to look like? Will this be a time to buy? Will this be a time to sell? Talk to us about that, bro. Good question. Good question. So very interesting. So there's been some headlines out there saying that the Fed is that the Fed may decrease interest rates several times in 2024. And there's a good side and a downside to that. So the good side is obviously rates will come down. But mm -hmm. here's the thing, right? The problem that we have in this country is a lack of inventory. And what I mean by that is there is more demand for homes than there are homes available. Gotcha. And what that does, and that's part of like why the prices have gone up. And so when the if the rates come down, everyone who's been on the sidelines because of the high interest rates, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to come back into the market and they'll mm -hmm. be competing again for the same number of homes. The prices may very well keep going up. And so I think the big problem is the lack of inventory. So I'm hoping that over the next couple of years, there is more development and cities are opening themselves up to being a little more relaxed on development to further incentivize it. But mm -hmm. it's going to it's going to be a bidding war. That's my prediction. If the rates come wow. down, because people are going to be rushing back to the market. Doesn't mean it's not mm -hmm. possible for you, but that's what I anticipate. Sheesh. Got you, got you, man. All great game. I have a a I have our final I have our famous final question for you, man. I, I want to ask you. I'm gonna say two quotes, and I need you to let me know which one is more accurate in your opinion. All right, all right, bet. So the first one is more money, more problems. Shout out to Biggie, and the second one is money can't buy happiness. Which one do you believe is most accurate? Wow. That's a hard one, man. So more money, more problems, and money can't buy happiness. Which one is more accurate? Well, you know what? I don't know if any of them are necessarily more accurate. I would say more money, more problems to an extent. I think mm. as people go up and you make more money, there are new challenges with that come with the responsibility of having more money. And so I could see how those are perceived as problems, but you know, once you get over those obstacles and you get used to whatever that responsibility is, then it's no longer a problem. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I think money solves a lot of problems, <laughs> you know, so maybe more money, more problems solved to an extent, but yeah, I guess that one resonated with me a little bit more, but okay. I guess, I guess it's all about perception. And you sure that wasn't because you're from Brooklyn and you got a shout out, shout out, <laughs> shout out big. <laughs> Maybe it was subconsciously. <laughs> I love it, brother. I love it, man. Thank you so much for dropping all of this game, providing all of this value. I already knew it was going to be fire, you know, since the first time we met, man, not too long ago. So again, you know, let everybody know where they can reach you. And if you have any final words, brother, go ahead. Yes, sir. So you can reach me everywhere at Black Real Estate Dialogue. Uh, so Instagram, all the social medias. Uh, check out the show, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, anywhere else. Black Real Estate Dialogue, blackrealestatedialogue.com for any resources that you might want to consider or be interested in. And my last words is be encouraged because, you know, we are in an interesting space within real estate. There are talks of interest rates steadily coming down. And I got to be honest. When they come down, the competition will go up and the prices will mm -hmm. probably go up. So don't be don't be discouraged. Have somebody good on your team. If you're in position, if you're not in position, get a plan together. Start saving your money. Start making more money until your time comes. So I just want everybody to be encouraged. Where, at whatever stage you are, getting on the path to home ownership, getting on the path to being an investor and so forth. Just get ready for when your time comes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And for all of our listeners, take some of these gems, take some of this advice, 
And, you know, we talked about a lot of great information here today, but if you can take a few things that you can apply and put into your life now, I promise you over time, they will have large results. So again, Sam, thank you, my man. This was great. And to all our listeners, y'all already know, we need y'all to stay safe, stay invested, and stay FYI fly. We'll see y'all next week.